Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting this season. Everything from NFL to pro and college basketball, UFC, MMA, and more. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at Bet Online. With live betting options, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. Bet Online is truly the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite leagues and events. Head to betonline.ag today or use your mobile device to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. Betonline.ag, where the game starts. Welcome to another episode of the Believe in OK State podcast. Megan Robinson joined as always by Justin Southwell, Eve Batoba. Guys, earlier this week, we thought it'd be a slow week. We can figure out what to talk about. But no, it is schedule release week. Let's go. It, yeah, it took long enough, but we finally have a big 12 football schedule. Everybody can make their wedding plans. We can schedule around the fall. <laughs> Let's get after it. Schedule homecoming. We're going to take a somewhat deep dive you know if espn can do a three-hour nfl schedule release we can also make an entire episode out of a schedule release so we're going to do that tonight so before we get too deep into it how do you feel quick initial thoughts about oklahoma state's big 12 schedule or entire schedule this season yeah my initial thoughts are uh it's actually very positive uh, looking over everything i love that we get to play all four of the new big 12 schools right out of the gate and I also low-key love that it's all toward the end of the season. And I'll kind of share a little bit of the reason why later through the episode. But initial thoughts, pretty much all positive. Yeah, overall, I'm also very happy. I think that we caught some pretty good breaks, actually, by not playing TCU, Baylor Tech, or Texas. Um, you know, only one game in the state of Texas probably – you know, it doesn't help much in recruiting because we recruit the state of Texas so heavily, especially whenever you meet with parents in Texas. You want to you want to tell the kids that you're going to, uh, you know, you want to tell the parents that they're going to watch their kids play. But I don't think that's too big of a deal, to be honest, uh, because Oklahoma is such, so close in proximity. But overall, extremely happy with the breaks that we got, the games that we are getting to play at home. And I feel good. I feel really good. Well, I was going to say, Eve, I think that, you know, with that being this year, it doesn't seem like there's a ton of games in Texas, but there's still all those teams there. So uh, schedule is going to balance out and we'll be able to yeah. play them eventually. So fret not, fellow Texans, uh, just keep riding for OK State. We'll be good. Yeah, I mean. I was just going to add, like, one thing that we still don't know is how everything is going to shape out after OU and Texas actually leave the conference. Mm -hmm. Are we going to go back to there being two divisions with six teams each? Like, we just don't know for now. But what we do know is that in the 2023 season, where everybody is, we're kind of going the same round robin type of format that we have been playing with. And who knows, uh, any of these teams could end up in the Big 12 championship game. I have my picks, but we'll talk about that here in a bit. Nice. Eve, you took my thought. That was my thought exactly. Is like this is how it works this season, but in twenty four, maybe twenty four, definitely twenty five, this is going to be a complete shake up again. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Justin, you touched on it. We are playing the four new Big Twelve teams: Houston, Cincinnati, BYU, and UCF. So how this works this season, for people who don't know, every team in the Big 12 will play nine conference games without division. So that varies. The only other team to play all four new Big 12 teams is West Virginia. The top two finishers by conference winning percentage will play in the Big 12 championship. We will get to our predictions later. But Cowboys open the season three non-conference games hosting Central Arkansas at Arizona State for part of that home and home series and home against Southern Alabama. We kick off the new look Big 12 at Iowa State on September 23rd. Earliest trip to Ames since 1997. Guys, we wow. have some history with Iowa State. I know that they are probably one of your least favorite teams in the Big 12. Lots of Oklahoma State fans feel the same way. How do you feel about starting conference play with the Cyclones? I got to say, um, you, you know, Iowa State at Jack Trice Stadium is never easy. You know, we're coming in with an inexperienced quarterback against a defense that played very, very well last year. I know that their record didn't necessarily reflect how good the team was, but their defense, you know, finished top three in the conference. Now we're getting an offensive or sorry, we are getting a defensive coordinator in Brian Nardo that 
from what it sounds like, likes to mimic that style of defense. So that gives me a lot of hope. But, you know, it's never easy. That's actually one of those games where, you know, whoever ends up being our starting quarterback, whether it's Alan Bowman or somebody else, it could be a tough matchup for them. Honestly, I think that that game could go either way. I kind of agree with you, Eve, as far as how it could go either way, because um, typically the the struggle with the conference openers, I guess Gundy kind of has a perceived history of that. Now, I know like the last three seasons, Gundy has gotten away with the win for the conference opener. Um, last year with it being at Baylor, coming off the Big 12 championship win for them. So uh, that gives me a lot of confidence that we're able to go in and take care of business early on. And I think one of the biggest things that we have to our advantage is if we're going to play at Iowa State, I like that it is earlier in the season because we don't have to deal with the weather being a lot tougher yeah. in, say, November, for example. So I like that uh, we're able to knock it out early this year. But yeah. playing them early, you're still kind of getting a feel for who you are as a team. Yeah, I think you get a pretty good feel early on. I mean, you talk about the, you know, the non-conference games, you know, a couple easy wins there. I think Arizona State, you know, you go Kelly, uh, Kenny Dillingham, 32-year-old head coach. Uh, he did a great job at Oregon as the offensive coordinator, but, you know, Coach Gunny has almost 20 years of head coach experience on him, right? So I think that that, that head coach experience is going to help. You know, you go into Iowa State undefeated. People are feeling good about themselves. People are kind of starting to find their groove in a good way. So I think, you know, I, I, I like to lean towards the Cowboys a little bit there. But again, it's just it's, it's Jack Trice Stadium at Ames, Iowa. And you, you just never know. Crazy things happen in Ames. Yeah, I mean, it's a good it's a solid road test right out of the jump, but um, you know, I think we play at Arizona state, but then yeah, for the first conference game at Jack Tri stadium, um, I would say, yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to be a tough game, but I also like the fact that it's early on in the season because we're not the only ones figuring it out. Like Iowa state is also going to be figuring out what's oh, yeah. going on for, for their side. So uh, I think more often than not, as long as everybody stays healthy, then uh, I would say playing against Iowa State in the beginning is probably to our advantage still because it's even though it is Iowa State, they aren't necessarily one of the, the top Big 12 teams that you would want to maybe see on the road right out of the gate. So uh, I like the I like the matchup early. Um, I think that you can use that win as uh, some good momentum moving Agreed. forward for the other conference games after iowa state we have a week five bye they love giving us those early, <laughs> those early buys like why why how do you guys feel yeah. about another i mean it is a week later than this past season but we no one wants a week five bye you don't want it yeah i was looking at the schedule it's really weird how it, it really is like two only two of the big 12 teams have that early bye week Kansas and State and Kansas State and I just I don't really understand the logic behind that it's I don't want to say that it's a punishment you know but it kind of feels like that in a sense but I wonder like you know what's what's the purpose behind that why can't you just move the West Virginia game in that place and then we have our bye week on you know October 21st or whenever it is that we're supposed to play against West Virginia um, along with some of the other teams that have bye weeks that week so um it's kind of weird there's we're the first and then there i think the last group of bye weeks there's also only two teams on a bye week for that week as well so kind of weird how that all shakes out but yeah two years in a row with a really early bye week um i don't know it, yeah it, it kind of kind of hurt us last year a little bit as far as you know not being able to bounce back and recover from some of those injuries but yeah, we wait all this time for this dang schedule to come out just for us to have a buy in September. Now, I mean, nobody wants a buy in September. You'd rather have it mid to late October, maybe even November. You want some guys to be able to recover, right? Like you don't know what bumps and bruises are going to come, what nicks and bumps. Like those recoveries are crucial, especially as you get into more meaningful games that probably have more postseason implications. Um, so, yeah, that buy – 
ah, it's, just, it's, it's not ideal. It's actually pretty brutal. But you know what? You, 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 you gear up and you keep it going. Hopefully it's not a situation like what we had last year to where, you know, so many of our starters got hurt over the course of the season and there wasn't really much time to recover. So, you know, continuing to knock on wood for all of 2023. Hey, and you know T- TCU, they provided a ton of great examples for for us last year as far as you know turning your season around from a five and seven program to playing in the national championship. They also had the very early bye week last week. They actually had the bye week a week prior to what Oklahoma State had, and they were able to get it done. So it can be done. It's a little bit harder, and a lot of things fell TCU's way. But, hey, who's to say that won't happen for Oklahoma State? Anything is possible. Off the bye, what I think is interesting is we have a Friday game. We host Kansas on a Friday, which I didn't even catch at first. Kansas State, yeah. All right, Kansas State. You're right. We're we're Kansas State and Kansas back-to-back. So Kansas State is first, October 6th, followed by Kansas, both games at home on a Friday game. What are the challenges? I mean – this is our first Friday game or it's our second Friday game since 1940. So you guys, wow. I mean, it asked like, wow. what are the challenges of playing on a Friday? But you guys wouldn't know because you haven't played on Fridays <laughs> since high school. Um, but like, how, how could that change things for both teams? I mean, we're coming up a bye, so we automatically have 13 days rest, but still just the mentality on a Friday night, what challenges are Chris? Yeah, I mean, we haven't we haven't played on a Friday, right? Neither Justin or I um, played on a Friday, but we did play on Thursday night games a, uh, mm-hmm. a couple times, actually. So, you know, with those Thursday night games, everything is um, all about just taking care of your body. It's all about, hey, making sure that you can recover as quick as possible. Now, in 2023, it's a little different because we're coming off a of bye week. So that extra time, I think, is definitely going to help. And you know what? I think it really helps whenever you're not going against Deuce Vaughn, right? Deuce Vaughn, <laughs> Kansas state's old running back who declared for the 2023 uh nfl draft um you know adrian martinez is returning but whenever you know you know more eligibility that, yeah, like what still still has eligibility i think he's a senior right coming what? back and still I God, yeah. he was a sophomore in 2019 yeah. it feels like he has been in college for oh. forever for forever but you know him being there um but you know deuce vaughn not being there i think is something that you know at least helps people out a little <laughs> bit i remember i said last season that's one of those guys who just felt like on any given day he was the best player in the big 12 conference so um no it's 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 exciting because um they're, they're going to be rested they're going to be fresh and we get to play you know kansas schools on back-to-back weeks but that friday night game just seems kind of weird um but i'll tell you what i'll be watching Hey, I like it. Um, it one gets us a lot of uh, a lot more eyes on uh, on TV, but we also have you know since we are coming off a bye, I think that I don't know if you remember this Eve, but coming off the bye week and then getting geared up to play that next team, it was kind of like let's go already. So <laughs> the fact that it's one day less that you have to worry about like getting out there. I think that that's going to be good. Um, and then yeah. it kind of like leads right into the next week where you do have an extra day to prepare. And uh, yeah, we'll take that. We'll take that all the time. So yeah. And Kansas, Kansas state is a physical team. Like they're dominant at the, especially at the line of scrimmage. The fact that we are getting them at home, we are getting them whenever we are rested only bodes well for us. Um, By week story real quick. Since you mentioned Justin being like, let's go. I remember it was 2012, 2012 season, which was my final season um, at Oklahoma state. Our, our bye week was leading up to the University of Texas. We're playing Texas, and it was uh, me, Jeremiah Shimanga, who was a linebacker, and Brandon Fagan, a wide receiver. The three of us uh, decided that we were going to go get pedicures for the very first time. You can't, you can't take your mind off the games. So you're just like, yo, we got to do something that is relaxing. So we all go into a pedicure. We didn't even go to a pedicure spot. We went to Walmart. So, you know, Walmart had a pedicure area. They had like a section at Walmart and we decided to all get pedicures. I have a photo of it as proof. And everybody was just staring at us because I think we were all wearing like cut off shirts and everybody was like, who are, who are these big guys in here just getting pedicures? So anyway, you like Walmart make sure that you to have relax. It. Walmart. Hey, Walmart. <laughs> they, it's a, it's a part of the recovery in the Walmart right here. So. Yeah, it, it, it was a part of the recovery process. Make sure that you get your mind right. Make sure that you get your toes right and get ready to play Kansas State. Covered from head to toe. That's right. 
how, how many pedicures have you gotten since? Uh, I could probably count on one, but probably five, a solid five. Like my wife likes to make sure that my my uh, my feet are nice and smooth. Yeah. yeah. Justin, have you gotten a pedicure? We're sidebarring for a second. Ooh. We'll get back to the schedule. I actually have never, I don't think I've ever gotten a pedicure. I've gotten oh, a bro. manicure. You, you I, got a, a, I got a manicure because I got a, you know, these receiver hands got to stay <laughs> fresh. No, I'm just kidding. I, I did that one time. Yeah, never had a pedicure, but uh, I highly recommend uh, getting a pedicure. Yeah, my dad gets manicures more than I do. It's it's crazy. He's very into his into his nails. But I digress. Back to the schedule. So we are we're working our way down. So after our back to back home weeks, we travel to West Virginia, and then we are back in Stillwater for homecoming, America's greatest homecoming. I think this year, what's interesting about homecoming is it's against Cincinnati. So how do you guys think it's going to feel playing an opponent who was not one of our typical homecoming old Big 12 team? Yeah, I think that we go into this game with some pretty good momentum, honestly, Megan. Um, when you look at you know the, the, the previous two games, even the previous three games, right? So we talk about Kansas State. We talk about Kansas. You got Jalen Daniels, who is returning for his senior season as well. You saw what he was able to do whenever he – was fully healthy. Um, Kansas was actually a contender. They were getting a lot of media attention and not a national attention. So Jalen Daniels comes in, but I think that we beat them in Stillwater. And then you actually have to travel all the way to West Virginia where Garrett Green helped um, the team finish last season pretty strong after he replaced JT Daniels as the starter. And JT Daniels, by the way, I'm pretty sure is at Rice now. He he yep. enrolled to Rice and transferred yep. to Rice. So my man has played for what well, he's been in college for six seasons now. And has played what USC, Georgia. Um, he's played at USC, Georgia, West Virginia, and now he's going to Rice. That's a lot of that's a lot of different schools that JC JT Daniels has gone to. <laughs> but I think you get you get the ball rolling, right? Hey, win at Kansas State, win, win against Kansas, win at West Virginia. We're gonna be one of the most traveled teams um, in the Big 12 up to that point, right? So think about it. You're going all the way to Arizona State. You're going all the way to West Virginia. At a different point, you're going all the way to UCF. I think in total, we'll have traveled over 3,700 miles, one of the most traveled teams in the country. So like those rest periods are going to be so critical. So I think that um, you know, you come back from West Virginia, Cincinnati, they're brand new. Scott uh, Scatterfield is a new head coach coming in from Louisville. I don't see a Sonny Dykes type of entrance here in the Big 12 Conference. The Cardinals only went seven and five last season. But I think we take care of business against uh, those Cincinnati's um, in Stillwater. Those Cincinnati, what's Cincinnati's Bearcat. mascot? Is it the Bearcat? Bearcat. Bearcat. Cincinnati what's Bearcat? a Bearcat? I don't know. Like, be a bear or a cat, you know? What's, what's a Bearcat? You know what? All I know is the Cowboys going to rope them. <laughs> Justin, we lost you there for a second. Welcome back. Yeah. Welcome back. <laughs> no, you. You just, we well, just I was of... just going to say, you know, the fact that we play Iowa State and then have the bye week leading up to Kansas State is great because those are two historically very physical teams. So the fact that we're able to have a bye week between that to break it up is uh, one of the things I find is a very positive thing looking at our schedule. Well, Eve and I were just talking about, too, is homecoming is the 28th this year. America's greatest homecoming. Get your tickets now. Uh, but we're playing Cincinnati. So it's a new it's a new opponent for homecoming. It's not one of the, yeah. the old Big 12 teams that we're used to. So how do you think that'll change sort of the atmosphere and the environment? I don't know if it'll change it too much, but I think that it'll be a welcome to sight for anybody that wants to travel from Cincinnati to check it out. Um, welcome to the big 12. Here's America's greatest homecoming. Nice yeah. treat. Yeah. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and recruit some of those people over in Ohio. You know, there's a lot of football talent, like surprisingly, there's a lot of great high school talent in the state of uh, Ohio. So if any of those recruits want to come down to Stillwater and watch these Cowboys take care of business, uh, you're more than welcome to. What I am personally excited about, and I, I think, I think that we should have pushed homecoming to November and made Bedlam and homecoming the same, the same weekend, just all in, all in your face. Uh, I have no say in that decision, so that is not the case. But the week after homecoming, Bedlam is back for what could very well be. This could be for real. The final time, it will definitely be the last time in Stillwater. How you guys feel about having Bedlam back this year? Bedlam on November 4th. It's I think early. That's, yeah, that's the early. earliest that we have played them in as long as I can remember. Since right. I think, after the, 
after that, you still have three games remaining in the season. I think that's the earliest since 2017. Is that right? Okay. So, you know, probably the last time that we play them in a while, at least for the foreseeable future, as they're exiting the conference, uh, calling it the Trace Ford reunion game, right? I wonder how he's going to be welcomed back to Stillwater. I'm actually excited to see how, um, gosh, I forget the Dylan, Dylan, is that the, the quarterback's Dylan name? Gabriel. Dylan Gabriel, how he performs um, the following week, too, against his former school in UCF, right? He's a returning guy. So, you know, you want to, th- you, you'd like to say that with that continuity, there's probably going to be some improvement made from that team. You just never know how Bedlam is going to play out. Like, I, I, I don't know. I mean, whenever you look at the record, yeah, you think that it's lopsided or one sided. You never know how Bedlam is going to play out. And oftentimes it comes down to the fourth quarter. Okay. So, <sighs> um, yeah, it's an early game, earlier in the season, but I think Oklahoma State gets the win there. Nice. I love it. Um, with us playing them earlier, uh, it doesn't change the stakes at all. I like no. to. I would like to think that because it's earlier, we're probably, hopefully, fingers crossed, that everybody is healthy, <laughs> healthier than they would be at the end of the year. And so I like that aspect of it. And I also love the fact that it is in Stillwater at, at Boone Pickens Stadium because we saw it last year. I mean, of course, the injuries, but even whenever it is the worst OU team in the last 25 years or whatever the yeah. case was, you still have to go into Norman and they weren't able to overcome that challenge, unfortunately. So the fact that we're the home team bodes well for us. I think that in the grand scheme of our entire schedule, I think the two toughest opponents would be OU and Kansas State, and we have both of them at Boone Pickens Stadium. So, again, another positive at looking at the schedule. What I don't like about the Bedlam – I mean, I am I personally am very happy Bedlam is back. I'm not surprised it's back. I know it was kind of up in the air, but I feel like the Big 12 was like, no, we got to get this in one more time. I, I, I think that they weren't going to let that, that go away. Uh, I, I don't like how early it is because, to me – Rivalry weekend is the last weekend of college football. You have the Egg yeah. Bowl, you have the Iron Bowl, you have Arizona State, Arizona. I don't know what that rivalry is called. You know, you have all of these big rivalries being played the last weekend. And I feel like it's just an exclamation point on the season for whoever wins. Like we could be 0 and 9, 0 and 10, 0 and 11 entering that week, but you have that one final win against OU and you're like, this is the greatest season ever. So I feel like the stakes are still there, yeah. but it, it, it's kind of like you built to this climax of Bedlam and then you win that game and it's like, oh crap, we still have three games left to play. So it's sort of this, like, how do you come back from that? How do you regroup for the rest of the season? And that's, I think, going to be sort of, the big, the big question mark coming off of that game. Yeah, and and Bedlam is always a very emotional game. Like no matter who you are, I know that one of the things that you always want to make sure that you that you have intact is your composure as a football player, especially as a quarterback, especially as a DB. But there's something about that Bedlam game. Every single year, whenever it rolls around, that kind of just goes out of the window. I've told you, <laughs> I've told you in a previous episode about how people on the sideline will be cussing at each other, trying to make sure that they feel the energy from the sidelines. Like there's something that's just really, really personal about that that Bedlam game. So they're coming off of, um, you know, there's a lot of really, really high emotion, and hopefully they can just kind of, you know, keep that contained as they go. Um, towards the rest of the season, right? Because af- right after that, you have to travel all the way to Orlando. You have to go all the way to Orlando and play UCF. So it is it is weird. I, I like that, um, you know, we're playing them early in the season for all the reasons that Justin mentioned, but the traditionalist inside of me really wants to agree with you too, Meg. Um, so I think it's just one of those situations where you go into the game and you think to yourself, okay, at least there's going to be new opportunities for new rivalries in, <laughs> in the Big 12 Conference. Well, here's another positive. If you want to look at it this way, with all of the rivalry games, it makes it a little bit tougher maybe to figure out where college game day is going to end up. And I think that with OSU playing OU earlier, maybe Bedlam could be a potential landing spot for college game day. And they don't have to worry about, you know, should we pick? It's like, this is the game, you know? Um, So I like that if everything shakes out the way Oklahoma State is hoping it will, then uh, we'll have a high stakes matchup with college game day here. And I'm pretty sure that OSU has a winning record whenever college game day comes into town. So it's always a good thing when ESPN's in the building. Uh, 
guys, I'll make some calls, see who I can bribe. I love it. <laughs> I have zero pull, but I'll, I'll try. Every year, I'm like, please come see me. Um, <laughs> I digress. Uh, but Eve, you mentioned after Bedlam, we have to travel to Orlando, play at UCF. Justin, I know you're pumped for this game because it's probably going to be an epic right. uniform matchup. It is Veterans Day. What do you expect to see in the uniforms in that game? Well, after we talked to Justin Williams a couple of weeks ago, he mentioned UCF as kind of one of the teams that needs to be on our radar. Yeah. And uh, I would tend to agree just seeing what they've done in the past. I need to kind of look a little bit closer as far as what they've done to honor veterans around that Veterans Day weekend. Uh, I'd be curious to see what their history looks like there. But OSU typically, I mean, they have had – certain aspects of their uniform that would honor veterans and uh, folds of honor type of thing like that. So curious to see if that is integrated into an away uniform. And I just expect a, a crazy awesome matchup, a uniform matchup for that game. Yeah. If there is one newcomer school that I think is going to give some people a run for their money, I think it's going to be UCF. Uh, you think about UCF as a school that has a, enormous fan base I, I don't think a lot of people realize that there are so many alums of ucf like they're, they're spread out all across the country right meg i also want to note that ucf i had no idea until i i went there i did not attend there but i went there for a story on mackenzie milton when he was still there their student body is over like sixty thousand. That yeah. school is massive. They are one of the largest schools in the country and i had no idea until i was i was like oh you're probably like Around 30. No, no, no. They're a huge school. So, yes, there are alumni everywhere because 60,000 is unbelievable. That's that's insane. unbelievable. That's, that's three times. That's like almost three times the size of Oklahoma State. Yeah. So all the OSU alum who are out there in Orlando, I know my friend Rachel, former OSU cheerleader, stunt, a member of the stunt team. She lives in Orlando right now. She's excited that we're actually that the program is going to be um traveling to Orlando in its inaugural season, um, you know, with UCF in the Big 12 Conference. So the last time we were actually there was for the 2020 Cheez-It Bowl, where we beat the University of Miami and Brennan Presley went off. I'm hoping that we can get some type of a repeat performance. I know that Gus Malzahn did not have a great recruiting class. Um, they're ranked 64th in the country in their first season going into the Power Five Conference. So hopefully that bodes well for us, right? Um, Again, new schools. I remember whenever we would travel to, you know, West Virginia for the first time, whenever they joined the conference, it's you're kind of oh in awe. You're like, oh, wow, here we are. You know, we've never really played here. That gives us a real opportunity to actually recruit more people in the Southeast Conference, you know, for them to be able to say, hey, we're going to be, you know, coming around this area, too, because, you know, there's a whole bunch of talent in that side of the country. Yeah. So, you know, I'm excited about that game for sure. And I think we win that game because, you know, they're new. They don't have a great recruiting class. Gus Malzahn is the head coach. Come on, man. we can make it happen. Well, Eve, you mentioned the talent pool in Florida, and I noticed by looking at the, I think it's 39 five-star recruits as of this class. I think it's 39. I'll have to double check. But most of them I saw were from Florida, Insane. and that surprised me a little bit. Speed. So if we're able, to, you know, if we're able to, you know, get in there and let let that brand you know, right out there in Florida, then uh, I can see maybe a couple of five stars heading to Stillwater sometime soon. But uh, I mentioned it earlier. The uh, reason that I like playing all of the teams, all the newcomer teams toward the end of the season mm -hmm. is because at this point in the season, we're able to see uh, kind of a, a body of work of what they've done against other teams in the big 12 leading up to that point uh, to, to kind of get some tendencies on film that you wouldn't have, necessarily at the beginning of the season so i like that aspect of it and then two eve you know i mean everybody knows like november football is some of the toughest football that's played across the country and i, I love the fact that we're playing teams that are newcomers to the big 12 so oklahoma state can really show them what big 12 football is all about in november interesting we end our season at home against BYU. So yeah, we do play all of those, those, uh, yeah, Cincinnati, Oklahoma, and then UCF, Houston, BYU, three newbies to 
end this season. So UCF Houston is our only back-to-back away game, which I think is kind of interesting yeah. and kind of cool that we only have that. Otherwise, it's pretty much home away, home away, with the exception of the Kansas State, Kansas games. Oh, and Cincinnati, Oklahoma. I digress. We end our season week of <laughs> Thanksgiving with BYU. I think, Justin, you said it in the very beginning. No Texas, no Texas Tech, no Baylor or TCU. I'll be honest. Like, those are very good opponents, and I'm happy we're not playing them for that reason, but I'm also kind of bummed that we're not playing at least one of those schools because we've sort of, I feel like, you know, after how things ended last year with us and TCU, I would love to play TCU again to be like, no, we can beat you this time. And we kind of have this budding rivalry with Baylor. I know we beat Baylor last year, but they also weren't the team that everyone thought that they were going to be. So to not play those two teams, I don't know, I'm a little bummed about that. I, for yeah. one, am not bummed. <laughs> I think that going against these schools that know us, that there's a lot of familiarity with, if we yeah. can go into this season where – you know, there's still some uncertainty with Oklahoma State. Okay, like there's it's on the offensive side and on the defensive side, yeah. new quarterback, um, you know, new defensive coordinator. There's so much that is unknown. I want, I would rather face teams that don't know us that well, don't know our tendencies. You know, at that point in the season, you know, who knows what's actually going to happen? You know, how how much uh, film they're actually going to have on us. But I love that, and I love being able to, uh, you know, s- some of the tougher opponents that we've had trouble with in the past. Right? You talk about TCU, a team that's you know, just went to the national championship. Baylor, who seems to you know have our number, or at least it goes back and forth pretty frequently. So you know, the fact that we are ending the season, you got UCF, you got Houston. Houston, you got BYU, you know, Houston, the only Texas school that we play, at least it is in Houston where we do a lot of our recruiting. And in BYU, newcomer, you got Kalani Sataki coming into Stillwater. Uh, BYU is an independent school coming to the Big 12 Conference. One thing that they're going to be dependent on is this L that they're going to take. So I think we, we finished the season with a W. And Megan, you said you at least wish that you could play TCU. I actually see us playing TCU in the Big 12 Championship game on December 2nd. The Horn Frogs of TCU are going to be facing the Oklahoma State Cowboys. And that is going to be a good matchup to see who goes into the playoffs. Full prediction. Come on now. Nice. Well, yeah, I mean, Maggie made a good point. Uh, Texas, you know, we we don't get that automatic dub. Uh, so we miss out on that a little bit. We <laughs> bounce back game, you know, uh, had the chance there. But I like I like Eve's prediction with that. The one team that I think that I'm missing out on most is Texas Tech. Uh, Maggie mentioned like Baylor was kind of like the budding rivalry. I kind of see it as Oklahoma State versus Texas Tech. There's kind of a lot of back and forth as far as – you know, Oklahoma State is copying Tech. Tech is copying Oklahoma State. We got the Cowboy-looking mascots, and uh, I think that some of the fans are calling it, you know, the the Dust Bowl between Oklahoma State and Texas Tech. So I was kind of surprised to see that they weren't on the schedule. Uh, that would have been, a, I think, uh, a good segue into having them at the last game of the year for the future rivalry for Oklahoma State. But... Um, We'll just have to wait. It's all good. But uh, I'm not – I'm with Eve. I don't really miss those teams. I like. I, I really like to see us playing all the new teams like right out of the gate, especially Eve, like we, like you mentioned with the question marks. And not, in, not even necessarily the question marks. I think that we have that uh, maybe to our advantage to be able to play those teams that historically are a little bit weaker than what we see from Texas, Texas Tech, Baylor, TCU – where maybe that provides a little bit of momentum, like just rack up some wins and, you know, lead that into better recruiting uh, just all, all the way around. So I, I like the fact that we're not playing some of those teams that yeah. historically have, have known us and, and we get a chance to prove ourselves against these new guys. I mean, what an opportunity. Think about it. What an opportunity for us to be able to run the table really across the country, right? You talk about going as far west as Arizona State and as far east as UCF, right? You take a school like Notre Dame, 
Notre Dame, why do they have such a big brand? Because every single year they literally go coast to coast to play, right? They're in the Midwest. They always play like somewhere up in New York. They're in the ACC. So they have those, those contracts with those schools out there. And they always play Stanford or they're playing USC out on the West Coast, right? So people get to see them on a regular basis to take advantage of that exposure. We have a chance to do the same thing this season against some teams that we really have a shot to, to, to beat. You know, so, you know, I'll give you my prediction for what our record is going to be. But, man, what an opportunity for us. I just want to say Notre Dame football is not in the ACC. They are independent and it drives me crazy. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. They are ACC for everything else. But for football, they're independent. Well, I mean, yeah. look, I, I'm, I'm not going to go there either. But as somebody who um, has a lot of appreciation for Notre Dame, because, um, you know, I work there. Uh, I can definitely say that uh, they, they do a phenomenal it. job with with managing their brand. Jack Swarbrick, in my opinion, is the best athletic director in all of college football. Well, hmm. we're not good. This is not the praise Notre Dame podcast. This is hey, even OK. Screw them. <laughs> <Screw 'em. laughs> like, we, we, we play them. Best believe I'm going for OK State all the time. Also, I don't mind saying good things about Notre Dame because we beat them not too long ago. Like literally just two years ago, we oh. just beat them. So I can say all the good things I want about them. They can never say that they beat us. Eve, before we get your record prediction, just you also you said T TCU, OK State in the Big 12 championship. That's your prediction, Eve. That's right. Justin, who are you taking for the Big 12 championship? Well, believe it or not, uh, I'm going to kind of go against my better judgment as far as not picking Texas to actually win until they start winning. Uh, just because they, they seemingly always get all the top recruits and then let us down. So, um, But I think that this is kind of the year that they turn a corner. You're picking Texas, bro? I think it'll be Texas and Oklahoma State in the Big 12 championship game. Wow. And everybody in the nation is going to be cheering for Oklahoma State to make sure Texas does not get a Big 12 championship on their way out the door. You know what? If Steve Sarkeesian doesn't get to, to the Big 12 championship game this year, it might be his final season down in Austin, Texas. You know, you, you know how those boosters are. They're very impatient. Pressure's like if on. If you don't get it done within four or five years, like you guys to go. You guys are going to hate my prediction. <laughs> Oh, Lord. You don't have OSU in it, do you? All I right, don't. let's hear it. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. I think we have a lot of question marks. I think I think if everything clicks, we can be there. I just – there are too Fair. many question marks on offense, number one being the play calling. I mean, obviously, Casey Dunn's the OC, but my the question is, is it going to improve? We are going to get into that in a later episode. I honestly – I'm going to go ahead – Bold prediction, say BYU. Don't sleep on BYU. Um, what? Don't sleep on BYU. I think they're a solid team. Wow. I I think, you know, initially my gut was like Cincinnati, but then new coach, I don't know. I don't think it's Cincinnati. Houston's kind of up and down. I think one of these new teams could come in and make a statement, and I think it could be BYU. And I'm going to go again, uh, K-State, back in the big 12 championship. I think that this is going to be Adrian Martinez's year, you know, hi, let's, let's put him in the Heisman conversation. I'm just going to go all out bold predictions. And I like Adrian Martinez. This is his 12th year in college. I hope that this is the year that he, you know, stays in and, and, and does well, not better than us, but you just do horribly when we play you. But yeah, so I'm going to go. That's a BYU. very bold prediction. So I don't know, Meg, if you've had a chance to look at the full schedule, but I honestly, I do BYU, not. I mean, that, this is kind of, this is one of the reasons that I am so early on and maybe it'll change, but the reason that I am picking Oklahoma state to make it to the big 12 championship game is because I think they do have a favorable schedule. Yeah. Like I said, playing I Kansas state and OU at Boone Pickens stadium, maybe some of the weaker opponents in the big 12 for the rest of the games. So I think that that is a very, a big positive in their favor. If I look at BYU's schedule, they got to play OU, Texas, Oklahoma State. I mean, they've got a gauntlet. And I don't think that – I mean, they are a talented team, but I don't think that they're going to be able to handle that business to be able to make it. There, I just think that there are too many losses on the table for them at this point in time now. Things can change. 
they might come out and have a guy that's like running things like Max Duggan at quarterback. I don't know. I mean, there's so many factors that we have to look at over the course of the off season leading up to it for more accurate predictions. Right. But at this point I'm all in on Oklahoma state and yes, there are question marks, but we're here to believe in Oklahoma state. So I'm going to keep doing that. Oklahoma state versus Texas. Wow. Man, I'm kind of I'm kind of shocked by by both of y'all's picks right now. Megan, who do you what do you have as Oklahoma State's record, and who do you think they lose to? You know, one of you, I forget which one. I probably Justin said eight and four, and I kind of like nine and three. No, was it Eve who said eight and four in the chat in her text? Someone yeah, but that's not that. That was just me being stupid. That's oh, okay. not my actual. Yeah. <laughs> that's not your okay. I was like, well, yeah, I, 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 I said that initially, and then I got a chance to really look at everybody's. Uh, schedules in the Big 12 conference, and then I completely changed my answer. Yeah, I honestly, I, I, I looked at the the schedule release with the grid, the chart with all the things, you know, the the grid, and I was like, okay, okay. I, I kind of scanned that. I didn't go too deep into it because I was like, I don't really care about the other teams. I care about Oklahoma State schedule and who they're playing, mm-hmm. and that's what we're here for. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say nine and three. I think okay. we're gonna be nine and three this year. Um, Ooh, I honestly, let's see. Losses. Losses. It's always hard. We, I think, okay, you know what? I'm going to say it. I think we'll lose in Ames, Iowa State. Um, I think we'll beat Cincinnati. I don't want to say we'll lose to Oklahoma, but that's always one of those games where it could go either way. I think mm-hmm. playing at Houston could potentially be tough. I, Cause I don't think Houston's a bad team. They've had some pretty good seasons in recent years. Uh, and then Kansas or Kansas state, both of those teams are, you know, I think they surprised everybody this past season, particularly Kansas and we played their backup quarterback. So I think, you know, playing, with their starting quarterback, I think Kansas could it's at home, which I think helps us, but it could be a very tough matchup. Yeah. I think, I think uh, Gundy does pretty well against his former coaches like Dan Ogerson. I think, uh, you know, that's one where Gundy kind of had his number, even whenever he was at West Virginia. Mm -hmm. So I think we, we, we get that one there. There are really two, two matchups in my opinion that that can be toss ups, right? You got Iowa state and you got OU. And I don't anticipate us losing both of them. Okay. So I have us going 11 and one. Oh. We're going to lose to one of those two schools and playing TCU in the Big 12 championship game. And I just don't know what's going to happen there. Wow. Uh, and it's really hard to predict this. I think this is probably the toughest to look at the schedule with so many unknowns leading into the season for Oklahoma state with all of the, this changes. is a podcast, bro. It's all about and, hyperbole, baby. And with all of the uh, new teams that we just don't know anything about. But that being said, uh, Eve, I'm kind of surprised that you're very confident. It seems like in beating Kansas state, you didn't waver on that at all. So yeah. Yeah. That's- I think that, yeah. De- Deuce Vaughn was the X factor. I mean, yeah. Him not being there, I think just gives us an instant edge. All right. Well, I love it. Uh, the fact that it is on Friday night uh, in Boone Pickens Stadium, I think that that is a toss-up game that we can win. But uh, I, I do like the the nine and three kind of range. But I feel like with that being the toss-up, I think that that probably puts us to the ten win mark. And uh, Gundy with his back against the wall gets it done again. So uh, as far as the losses just looking at it quickly um i can see it just kind of being like a random back-to-back loss to like ou and uh ucf and then kind of bouncing back at the end of the season and winning but uh that's just initial thoughts i'm sure it'll change between now and whenever we come back and do some preseason picks again of course i'm going to be very high on oklahoma state for bedlam i never learned my lesson as far as right now though i'm going to pick ou (laughs) Look, as you get more information, right, you have the chance to change change your picks, change your record. I think that's completely fair. So I'm sorry to all of our listeners and watch few viewers who are going to be mad at me for my Big 12 yeah. championship predictions. I hope I'm wrong. I really do. Uh, but again, like Justin said, we'll revisit this in August and September and kind of see where our roster is, how things are going, because things can definitely change. There is another 
transfer portal situation coming up. Who knows what's going to happen there? Could also be. So I don't know. This is the way too early Big 12 championship conference picks. So please just forgive us. We need something to <laughs> with me. You know, I just I just want to stir the pot a little bit. But what yeah. I do think is kind of cool about this season is that like last year towards the end, we were in that situation where we needed to win out. But if can't if Texas lost and we'd be in and all this stuff, but because we're not playing every single team, there's less of that, I feel. So I right. feel like it is much more you control your own destiny than ever before in recent years, which is kind of fun instead of having to be like, okay, well, we can make it in if Texas loses and then this team wins and this team, you know, like it's just, just win, just win. It's like, yeah. Amen, look, Megan, amen. Look, so, so much just of this win. season is just going to depend on health. Gosh, anytime that we have just a season that's, that's terrible, it's because people just get hurt. Right. I think that, you know, you have everybody healthy, then the floor is probably eight and four. And then the ceiling is undefeated. You know, I really believe that. So, you know, so much of that is going to depend on health. I mean, let's see how fast these new quarterbacks can actually play, pick up the playbook. I hope that, you know, they're taking care of those soft tissue prehabs. Right. Let's make sure that our <laughs> athletic trainers are doing the dang thing. Let's make sure that Coach Glass will. Look, I don't have to say anything about Coach Glass. He's going to get them boys right. But, you know, ultimately it just comes down to, you know, who can stay healthiest the longest. Yes. Well, I think we are all excited for September 2nd. should be a good year. Before we wrap this episode up, I just want to quickly give a shout out to Jason Taylor, one of the best defensive performances in the NFLPA Collegiate Bowl, six solo tackles, the most in the game, one forced fumble, earned an invite to the combine. Eve, your boy, show up. That's my up. guy, 2-5 Live, baby. Just keep on making plays. Make sure that you are showing your tail in front of these NFL scouts, in front of these DGMs, in front of these coaches, all right? Because come April 27th, look, they're going to be looking down their sheets, trying to figure out who they want for their secondary. And as before you know it, JT2, Jason Taylor the second, two five Live, is going to be uh, getting his name called. So excited about watching you ball at the next level. Let's go. Yeah, I love it. And uh, the fact that he's an Oklahoma guy that I can cheer for, I love that. And I think he's going to make us proud in the NFL with – with the talent that he's got. So I'm very excited to see where he lands and how well he does. Eve, you like to uh, pick your, your team of the year, your NFL team of the year. Could JT two be a factor in whoever you cheer for in the 2023 NFL season? You know, there, there are a couple of things that I look at going into the draft. You have salary cap space and what they're going to do during free agency. Right. So that, you know, middle of March is a huge, huge deal for me. And then after that, you have April, with, you know, the NFL draft, you know, let's see what happens there. All seven rounds. I pay attention to all of it. And then after that, it's like, hey, you have to watch the preseason games. All right, what, what's going on there? How is Jason Taylor going to be performing in those preseason games? So he is not going to be the sole reason why I pick a team. I, I Honestly, like he's probably not even going to be a huge factor. I, I, I look at it all. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. Now, if he goes to the Chicago Bears, if he goes to the Baltimore Ravens, if he goes to the Denver Broncos, who I rooted for last year, I could pick any any one of those three teams to actually become a fan of, right? I know that, you know, rooting for the teams that are obviously going to be good is just not that fun. You're just like, okay, well, we kind of expected <laughs> Kansas City to be here. You know what I mean? Like, we expect Cincinnati to be good again. It's like all that stuff. But I like to root for those the ones who, who are, like, has-beens, who have been good in the past, and we're waiting for them to be good again. Like, that – riding with that emotional roller coaster because sometimes Oklahoma State just doesn't do it enough for me. But having having to experience all those emotions on Saturday and on Sunday is a big deal. So, hey, JT, thank you for all the good emotions on Saturdays. But, hey, on Sundays, I, you, you're not going to be the reason why I'm picking my NFL team. <laughs> Sorry, that was a really long answer for no reason. I'm just picking, picturing you with your big board draft weekend, like this guy filling it out. Whatever. You know, I am literally He's texting people year. that entire week leading up to the draft. I have uh, friends on every single team in the NFL. So I'm always just like talking to people and be like, hey, you know, what, what are you thinking here? What do you think about this guy? This, this and that. It's just fun. It's really, really fun for me, like the whole personnel aspect of it and then what they do once they actually arrive there. So I love every everything about it. He's going to be a GM one day. No, I couldn't do that. I am 
it's too being a GM is too cutthroat. Like being able to cut players and sign players. I'm like, yeah, I just want relationships with everybody and I want you all to be happy. If I was a GM, I would like exacerbate the salary cap every single year and just pay everybody the max. Well, we can go on a whole whole other episode on all of that stuff. <laughs> uh, sorry yeah, let's go, uh, guys. I, I did not mean to take Eve down that down that yeah. road. We'll, we'll we'll do an OK State in the Pros episode um, at some point this off season. If you are missing college football, the Reese's Senior Bowl is this Saturday, one thirty Central Time on NFL Network. Tyler Lacey representing your Cowboys on the national team. He'll face off against former TCU and high quarterback Heisman finalist Max Duggan on the American team. So if you miss college football, that is this weekend. As for us, that's it for this episode of the Believe in OK State podcast presented by Bet Online. Once again, Megan Robinson, Justin Southwell, Eve Patoba. Thank you all for listening. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Tell me how trash my Big 12 championship picks are. Trash. You know, I got it from these two. We'll, we'll see. We'll see come December, but go pokes. <laughs> go pokes. Go pokes. Go pokes. <laughs>